Coog's house. It's official. Jamal Shedd has declared for the NBA draft. And the declaration created a swirl of emotions. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, daily podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Antworth. And whether you're a Houston fan or just a hater who can't step by, thanks for making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. And if you want to join the conversation but don't know what to say, tell us if cake is bread. It's a long story, but that's the question of the day today. Now, we are going to talk a lot about Jamal Shedd and his place in the pros, his place with the Cougs. And so on today, I want to talk some about like what comes up down the road, like what next year looks like, what's immediate, what what Houston and Jamal both need to do in the immediate future. Uh, but first and foremost, let's talk about what happened. Jamal Shedd had a phenomenal four year career at Houston uh, and did have a COVID year of eligibility. Right, he had senior night, did the whole senior night festivities and all those things, um, and ultimately first told to KPRC. Uh, Channel 2 in Houston, which I appreciate him going with the local uh, crew there. Shouts to Chancellor for getting the interview. Um, well done, I thought, too. It led Jamal talk a lot, let Jamal tell the story a lot. Um, Jamal did declare for the NBA draft with that COVID year in his back pocket. He had every opportunity to come back, and I have not seen official declaration up there. So he's going to keep the eligibility or not but it did not seem like that was he didn't he didn't specify that he was keeping it like the sometimes you'll have a, a person it's like jamal said last year that he was keeping his eligibility to go here from the scouts and then come back I, i'd imagine that's a full-on declaration to say the least um now i think we're gonna talk a lot about what this means and what what goes forward over the course of the show today if you're here looking for spring football talk, there will be a bonus episode that looks some at a couple more questions as Houston goes into the spring football game on Saturday. Um, but Jamal Shedd and his impact on Houston, I think, dominates enough conversation to have a whole episode in and of itself. So that's why we're here. Um, Jamal Shedd is the kind of guy that I've been arguing since about middle of the season last year or this past season. Uh needs a number up in the rafters. Um, he represents so much of what the university's pro- this program, this iteration of the Cougs is about. He was on the final four team on the elite eight team uh, leader of the last two teams. He hard nosed defender, national Naismith defensive player of the year uh, did all the right things on offense. He, you know, diving on the floor, sailing into the stand, setting up his teammates, celebrating as teammates, selfless leader, and selfless in like every possible way, a truly tremendous representation of the culture Kelvin Sampson's built in Houston. Uh, it's really though, kind of who he's always been. And I think that's kind of what's interesting here. I don't mean to go too far back in the history books here, but I am a history teacher by day. Jamal Shedd chose the path where he's going to be most challenged for as far back as any audience knows him. Right. Uh, growing up in Austin, he was going to Pflugerville Connolly High School as a fairly strong athletic program in Central Texas. Um, and, and he was like on path to be a part of that program. And he was going to be good. They were going to be good, et cetera. And he often instead family moved and went over to Maynard High School, uh, which had a less developed athletic program. I don't mean that's like shoot shots. It's just Connolly was Connolly and Maynard was Maynard. Right. Um, and he opted to play with Maynard and to stick with that and play with that. Uh, he earned the district MVP as a junior, took them to the state and won the state title game for 5A as a senior. He turned that program into an elevated version, higher than I think most people would have thought it could be, right? Um, in a similar vein, he chose to come to Houston kind of before the ship got rolling. He, he saw, you know, Corey Davis, Galen Robinson, and he saw what it could be, uh, but really, like, his senior year of high school, Houston was like dipping its toes in the top 25. Galen was a year removed from graduation. Quentin Grimes had just got there, right? Marcus Sasser was there as under-recruited freshman. Uh, that was the year the tournament got nixed because of COVID, right? Like 
he he I guess he he opted to come to Houston earlier in the process than his senior year of high school last minute signing day or whatever. It's like he picked the hat and that's when we all find out found out. But like that's where the program was when he went all in, right? Um and to be fair, the program he entered was on the path to the place that it is now in, but his involvement in it absolutely expedited, exponentially increased whatever adjective you want to look at a, a chart and graph to talk about it with it, it made it much faster it, it, this program is not what it is today without guys like jamal coming through and jamal specifically being such a big part of that as a freshman again he played a rotational role on a final four team uh, his sophomore year he started 32 games for a team that went to the elite eight and frankly just kind of ran out of gas with some major injuries earlier in the season just didn't have the bodies to withstand that uh, Sweet 16 Elite Eight weekend lost by six points, I think, if I remember correctly. I should probably look that up, but I just like that vividly remember that loss to Nova. Um, star for the number one team in the country for his junior and senior year. I mean, <laughs> he's he's got all of these accolades. Then his senior year this year, I, I know it ends with his ankle being you know nicked. Um, he he goes down, game dramatically changes. Houston loses by three in the Sweet 16. Honestly probably would have hurt to have anyone lost just because of the roster and the depth chart and how many guys are already hurt, but obviously can't get, can't get over losing a guy like Jamal. Um, he was national defense player of the year, big 12 player and defensive player of the year, uh, NABC's defensive player of the year, or NABC's player of the year. Um, he had a bunch of different awards to his name this year to kind of go up and down. But because of how well he represents in a selfless way the the Kelvin Sampson iteration of Houston and the culture that, that they've built in this program that will carry this thing well beyond Shed's time here and hopefully well beyond Kelvin's time here. You hope this thing is long standing once it's been built to the degree it's been built thus far, right? Um, I think it's someone someone's got to put their number and jersey up there in the rafters to embody this. And He's the best representation of it in, in every ways. Uh, he had he was a defensive player, one national defense player of the year. I think his offensive impact got, got undersold. He controlled the pace, executed the system, averaged just two, two turnovers per game with the ball in his hands so much of the basketball game, which is really crucial when you think about like the slow pace Houston intentionally plays with. Um, I know they get on the front transition on steals, but really like their half court offense was incredibly slow, took up a lot of the shot clock and being decisive and executing at the end of those like late shot clock situations is important, difficult, and he did it right. Um, in nine of 12 games, uh, or sorry, nine big 12 games, let's read my own notes, nine big 12 games, he had over 15 points. He also had over 15 against Dayton and Texas A&M in the tournament. Uh, he played 34 or more minutes 13 times this past season, including more than 44 and a half minutes against A&M in that tournament game we referenced earlier. Um, and he frankly was worth had he not gotten hurt. I think we can all assume if the Duke game and maintained and continue to be close, he, he would have played the 40 minutes of that one too. It was, he, he played so hard all the time. Um, gave all the credit to teammates. It's talking to him after the game. He'd say, Oh, LJ set me up great there. Marcus set me up great there. We couldn't have done this without Jairus doing this thing. Jawan, you know, was a beast on the board at, after Ryan Elvin comes in and hits the free throws, the first guy to hug and celebrate him after the game. I mean, it, it it's all of those things, right? This incredibly selfless kid that's grown into a young man leading this program. Um, just can't say enough about him. And it's really, really impactful to Houston that he's leaving, obviously. Um, but I don't think anyone's upset. And I think that's – we all want the best for Jamal. And I think it's watching him go achieve that – that is interesting. I want to talk about what that next could look like for Jamal, could look like for Houston uh, in the immediate future. Uh, and then I want to talk about it in a little bit longer form as well. But first, I'm talking about a guy that was super, super driven. And if you are looking to keep your ride in top shape, 
same kind of way. Passion, drive, and patience are the formula for winning championships, and they're also what keep your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof rats, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because of eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. All the parts you need and the prices you want, it's easy to make your car to the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, excluded supply, eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. So what comes next? Uh, for Jamal, it'll be a series of pre-draft workouts, meeting with teams. Uh, I imagine just the leadership he has. He'll probably end up getting uh, a lot of invites to talk to teams. Uh, people will see his measurables and wonder whether you know where he fits into the NBA. Um I'm on record, and I'll say it again. I think if measurables, measurables will hurt him in the draft, I don't think they're going to hurt him as NBA career, right? I think it's an important difference to look at here. Um, projections right now, we actually touched on in yesterday's episode, um, his highest I've seen in any consensus kind of rate, rating and uh, ranking is in the early 30s. It's the early second round. Again, that's because the measurables, he's you know, frankly listed at – uh, six foot one, 190. If you told me it was six foot a buck 85, I'd believe you. Um, I think you can't measure the stuff he does, so I don't know why that's super important. He plays point guard, it's not like he's got to go cover six, nine guys every play. Um, I, I do think though that he's going to get into the second round, likely in all uh realities. He might be a late first round pick. Um, we'll know more, more about that when the draft order is finalized at the end of the season with the lottery and all that. Um, but what we do know, or what I, what I do know, I guess you point out, is that there are six foot and six one guys in the NBA making plays right now. Uh, you know, whether it's Fred Van Vliet, who's had a long career, Jameer Nelson, um, I don't know, little Isaiah Thomas, a little bit different player, obviously. Um, but a bunch of different teams have played six foot six one guards, sometimes right next to a like six 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 seven guard, sometimes just as a part of what they're doing. Um, and, and I know that it's like a little undersized and, you know, we'll talk about where it could end up, I guess, later, but on the whole, I think that once he gets on the floor, his play will take over for itself. And then he's, he's the kind of guy you just, you got to have in your locker room. I said on Twitter, I'll say it again. There's not an NBA team that does not get better by adding Jamal shit. When that happens, we will see. But there is not a team that does not get better by adding Jamal Shedd. Full stop. Um, the team that gets worse in this, frankly, is Houston. Houston loses their leader, their captain, their selfless uh, you know, person in charge of the program, the face of the program, and is looking to put that role, both the face of the program and the point guard, on someone else. Kelvin Sampson has said... For a long time now, uh, whenever he talks at coaches' clinics, he said this. I was, I was a young, much younger coach back in like 2020. It was a virtual conference. I think it was 2020. Um, you know, he said that there are three players, three people that cannot have a bad practice: your head coach, he pointed at himself, your best player, and your point guard. And it really helps when your point guard is your best player, <laughs> right? Um, now, for the last year, that's been the case. The year before, he probably would have put it on Marcus and Jamal. And, you know, the year before, he might have had, uh, you know, Marcus before he got hurt or, you know, the, all those kinds of things. And I don't mean to go back and split hairs and who's what role in that. But next season, if the same thing continues, Kelvin's going to be Kelvin. He's going to do his best to not have bad days, right? Uh, the best player is interesting because this past year that was Jamal Shedd um, is that Jawan Roberts, right, coming back on his COVID year. Is that Emmanuel Sharp, who opted to come back when apparently he had a lot of NIL money opportunities elsewhere? Uh, and does he take that next step? If he grows much between year two and three, as he did in between year one and two, look out, folks. He he got he is really good. He uh, he that could be. Is he your best player because he does all the perimeter things? He's tough. He's hard nosed. Um, you know what does he what does he develop into by year three? 
right? Um, is your best player LJ? Does LJ take the next leap? He's legend points last year, right? Um, is it JVA? JVA, JVA Francis down low. Um, honestly, you know, continues to make steps forward. Um, centers have a, a, an outsized impact on the game because of the way you can funnel things to them on defense. They defend the rim. Like, does he become that best guy? You know, who knows? Um, I, I think there's a weird world though, where it is Emmanuel Sharp. Not a weird world. I anticipate him making that kind of a jump, and so I'm excited about seeing that. Um, that's, I guess, one way you try to replace Jamal there in the immediate future. The perhaps more difficult thing is going to be a point guard. Um, we talked in Thursday's episode about uh, Milos Uzan. Uh, Uzan is coming on campus this weekend for a visit. He's in the transfer portal from Oklahoma. You know, started fifty something games for them in the last two years. Um, Really, really good point guard. Really, really long, athletic, strong. Uh, frankly, I, I could see him buying into and being a good part of the Houston Cougar culture on defense. That point guard, like uh, Kelvin Sampson said, cannot have bad practices either, right? Uh, and so Luzon, I think, can fit that role, uh, kind of come in and be that leadership guy at point. I don't know if he'll be the best player on the team in the same kind of way Jamal was, but I think that he can carry the load at point guard at Houston, obviously. Other guys in the portal – not necessarily linked to Houston, but like Malik Mack, the Harvard kid. Um, people are linking him to other ac- high-end academic schools like your Cal's, your Stanford, your Northwesterns. Um, but he is really talented, and I think it does translate out of the Ivy League. Uh, so we'll see where he ends up. There are scoring options out there like John L. Davis uh, from FAU. Um, I think the – I got got on Twitter. Uh, there, well, I say that. Wade Taylor has been rumored to be looking at the portal. Uh, Trilly Donovan is like an insider uh, who has behind the scenes stuff on discord. He had been talking about, I guess that Wade Taylor may be looking at the portal and then some fake account tweeted it out and it, it got everyone, including myself because there'd been this kind of rumor that he might be, you know, dipping his toes in the water or, or looking at it. So we'll see where that goes. He's got some time before he has to pick, I guess um, Wade Taylor would be a high end scoring guy. He'd have to, Buy into some of the defensive things Houston asked for, but he was doing great things for Buzz down there at a and as well. So I'd, I'd imagine right now, as it looks, uh, you know, Luzon is considered a top 10 to 15 transfer guy across a lot of different outlets. A great point guard gets the Big 12. Uh, I don't know how much... I, I, I think he's one of the best guys available and he's already interested and already visiting. And I wouldn't be, I would not be upset if he declared, you know, he's coming to Houston on Saturday, right? Uh, Friday afternoon, whatever the case may be, I would not upset me. I think it's a good thing. I think the deal here is, and I'll talk about this some more in the next segment is that, you know, you can't, you can't put the Jamal shed standard on that best player or that point guard. It's not really fair. Um, Jamal Shedd was one of one. Not just because he wore it on his jersey. He was just that dang good. Now, I, I like Zan. I like Emmanuel. Um, I, I like the way the direction this program would go if those are the two guys. I could see LJ Cryer playing some more point guard minutes. I could see Emmanuel playing some point guard minutes in spurts. Uh, I think we're all going to really, really like Cordell Jefferson Cordelis um, is a redshirt freshman next year from Arlington DFW kid. Um, frankly, I'm projecting Mercy Miller as a two guard. I could see him playing some point in a, you know, limited function next year. I think he's a kind of score. Mercy is Mercy Miller, the incoming freshman from California uh, that you're going to have to play him next year. Kind of like you put, you pulled Emmanuel off the bench as a freshman. He, and then he was your, you know, key starter as a sophomore. Great, great, great score. I think there's a chance Mercy Miller has that kind of stuff in his bag. If he's, he's, he's a really, really talented scorer in the lane around the rim, shoots the ball. Well, all those things. Um, so, so we'll see where that goes, but if our betting man, again, it's all setting up for Uzan to, 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 you know, commit on Friday or Saturday and things to move forward with that. And that's, that's a really great option. folks. really, really great option. Um, that's in the immediate future. I want to talk longer term, what this means in this moment, but first with no, Houston Cougar basketball to go to. You're looking for something to go do, going to go find tickets to a concert or a comedy show, or going to go check out the theater, you know, or 
whatever you want to do around town. If you're looking for something to do in Houston or wherever you are, Game Time is the app you've got to get to go find those tickets because Game Time has every single feature you'd want. They have last minute flash deals, zone deals, tickets up to the moment of the event and after it starts if you need those tickets. Easy to find all kinds of uh, MLB, you know, you can find some Astros tickets. Again, they have theater, concerts, anything going on, you can find it. I like that they let you see what the view is going to look like in that venue for that event on the app right there. You say, I, what does it look like in this row, in that section? They show you what it looks like. Uh, you can also just say, hey, I want to sit roughly in this section and these couple of rows, what can you give me? They'll give you a deal, get about an average of 18% savings. You let them do the hard work for you. Uh, lowest price guarantee means you can show them uh, the same a ticket in the same row and section for less money. They'll give you 110% of the difference in credit, so you can make sure you go to more events around the city. All kinds of great things on the Game Time app. So download the Game Time app today. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, gear run. Teed. All right, so long term, I think you're looking at Houston Cougars putting Jamal Shed uh, jersey in the rafter. I think I said that earlier. Um, and you're going to see a program that slowly starts to get more of these Jarris Walker, Mercy Miller, high-end prospects, right? What Houston did with Grimes and then Sasser and now Jamal it's fine kids that were a little under-recruited, or in Grimes's case, recruited to Kansas, but then need to go get a fresh start somewhere, right? And turn them into literal All-Americans, right? And then, as we'll see with Jamal, turn them into pros. And what you're going to see is guys like Mercy, Jarris, and you know, maybe it's Keontae Gray Bear in the 2026 class. I like his game a lot. He's going to Link Academy next year. Uh, he's got a Houston offer. Um, or, or maybe it's, uh, what's it? It's Chris is the name of a kid, Chris Sinek. Um, he's a 2025 kid. Like his game a lot too. Um, maybe it's, you know, whoever these high end recruits are that continue to come in and have a Houston offer from their belt, they start to see the proof is in the pudding, right? Houston is produ turning these guys from the three-star that Jamal and Marcus are into pros or or from Quentin's spot where he, you know, needed a fresh start into a pro. Uh, Jarris, right, a lottery pick, right? These And Jarris would have been a lottery pick most places it goes, but you get me that, like, Houston has a role in this, right? I think the long-term impact of Jamal is that he shows what the potential of the program is right he's a great ambassador for the program you want him to be the face of it out there in the world for that right um it's great it's good things for the program long term for uh for houston okay uh, sorry long term for houston is that uh, i will say um while jamal is going to lead to future point guards and uh, and good things for houston in terms of pulling in more point guards or more high-end players because his name's in the rafters because he's proof of the pudding. Don't expect, it's not fair to expect next year's point guard to be Jamal Shedd. I don't really care which option it is. I think there are a bunch of good options out there for Houston. Jamal Shedd is one of one. You can't, you can't expect it to be whomever. It's kind of like replacing Marcus Sasser. LJ Cryer comes in, is great, is an all-Big 12 player. Um, leads the team in points per game. Very impactful. Marcus is Marcus, right? It's hard to replace Marcus. Uh, Jamal Shade, you can pull someone that's all big 12 caliber player. And you could have a guy that leads your team in points and leads the conference in assist and uh, lead the conference in assists and you know, lowest turnovers of any starting point guard in the conference, and all those kind of things. It's hard to replace Jamal. It just is. Um, long term prospect for Jamal. Uh, looking into the draft. Um, San Antonio will have an early second round pick. I don't know. It would be 33, 35, wherever. But in that area where you're seeing the high end of Jamal Shedd's projection, San Antonio will be picking. And I could not think of a better potential landing spot. Um, obviously, 
He played for a great coach in Kelvin Sampson. Greg Popovich, a great coach there in San Antonio. Playing with Victor Wimbanyama as a, you know, you, know, I, I, you can use every adjective you can think of to describe his size, his length, his rim protection, et cetera. But truthfully, that's a young guy that could use, weirdly, a veteran rookie, if it's weird to call Jamal Shed that, in the locker room to kind of like say, hey, let's approach this with this mindset. Let's be selfless here. Let's do, you know, like Jamal has the mindset you want to see put on to other rookies, right? And so to have a year two victor lined up next to a year one Jamal, I think would be a great thing for them. Uh, logistically, Trey Jones has one year under contract. Um, you know, not extending him and bringing in a rookie makes him expiring. You could then trade the expiring for more, whatever, right? I'm not going to get on the, you know, ins and outs of that, but that could open up a lot of options for them. Uh, Indiana also has an early second round pick. Indiana I pulled up because they play a lot of two point guard sets because uh, Halliburton for them is an interesting, tall, long point guard. So they actually run a lot of two point guard sets. Um, they would, you know, probably don't extend Nimbard, their other point, their backup point guard. Uh, you could imagine like some triumvirate of Shed, McConnell, and Halliburton kind of rotating in there. Um, I think Halliburton and Shed played really would play really well off of each other. Halliburton's size means he could cover if there was like a six six two guard or something, and, and Shed would be able to you know guard the other point guard or whatever. So size wise, they're not like outmatched on the back courts. And then selfishly, it would put him on the same team as Jarris Walker, the same way that Quentin Grimes and Marcus Sasser are both in Detroit right now, which warms your heart a little bit. I don't think Detroit takes another point guard, though, so I don't think all three of them are <laughs> there. Um, my dark horse hope. I don't know how far the Denver Nuggets get this year, but the farther they go, the later in the first round they are. And honestly, like the 27, 28, 29 – you could see the same kind of thing that happened with markets last year, where Detroit moved up into the second round or up from the early second round to the late first round to get Marcus. Um, I I think Denver would be a great fit for Jamal. Now he'd play a lot less there, and that you know I think is going to be hard to swallow for a guy that's getting started. He started thirty two games as a sophomore here, right? Like he started a lot of basketball games, but. Denver's secret to why they've been so good defensively the last couple of years, basically since uh, they got Jamal Murray got healthy for them, um, it's that while Jokic is not a great defender, they've surrounded him with four guys that get after on the defensive end, right? Jamal Murray's an underrated defender. Aaron Gordon's an underrated defender. Porter Jr., uh, KCP. I mean, that Bruce Brown for a stretch. I mean, that these guys in Denver – play good defense around Jokic and thus you kind of make up for the fact that he's not the best defensive anchor at the center position, right? Um, Jamal Shedd fits that mold. And frankly, he fits that mold and is a lot younger and projects to be a lot better in the near future than like Reggie Jackson is their currently backup point, current backup point guard, right? You see him getting a lot of minutes with the twos. You see Jamal Shedd doing that for sure. If you ever wanted to, you know, if, Murray got in foul or whatever, needed a break because he's got the injury history. Jamal Shea would absolutely be able to run with Jokic in that first team. He can catch and shoot. He can drive and uh, drop off. He can drive and dish it off. We saw him with the putback dunk in the tournament, obviously, that kind of highlighted his athleticism. But I, I think that's a great spot for him. And that's in the first round right now. And Marcus, for what it's worth a year ago, was kind of also projected this like early second round spot and got picked 25th overall at the end of the first round, right? So clearly the projections were a little off. If that works out that way for Shed this year, man, like that's that's a great fit for him to start his NBA career. I mean, a team competing for championships feels familiar to him, right? Now we're going to follow what Houston does, what Jamal does, each and every day here at Locked on Cook. So don't go anywhere. Hit subscribe. Like and comment so I know you're here. Locked on Cougars is a proud member of the Locked on Podcast Network, and that means your team, our Houston Cougars, each and every day. Go Cougs!